Howdy, howdy, y'all! It is Tuesday, which means it's time for another semantics. I feel like I say those same sentences in that same order every Tuesday, um, but it's true. It's time for semantics, and today I am joined by the one and only George Francis. George, how's it going? Going very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I am super thrilled to have you on because you make some of the coolest, uh, just loveliest stuff on the web. Uh, I mean, even as we're like scrolling through your your Twitter, like uh, you you do you know generative art. You you've made some fantastic things. Um, tell you what, uh, would you care to introduce yourself for folks who might not know who you are? And I'll be dropping some links in the chat for folks. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So hi, uh, I'm George. I'm a UI developer and generative artist, um, and which means I kind of make. Uh, art with computers and algorithms, um, and also trying to bring aspects of uh, generative art to UI design. So adding little kind of random touches to interfaces, just to kind of like either make the design process a little bit easier, or just add a little bit of joy to web pages. Is what I'm here for, really. Um. Yeah, and your your generative art is just some incredibly creative stuff i'm so so excited to be getting into this um yeah actually let let's i'm just gonna pop this one open um yeah and and we'll we'll take a look um this is generative <laughs> it, it, it is yeah so this is, uh, is an example of how you can use um image sampling or kind of rejection sampling uh, it is kind of in combination with something called a Bronoy tessellation which we're going to use today to create like a random pattern that is based on a underlying uh, image. So in, in this one, I'm using googly eyes because I am obsessed with googly eyes, but you can sort of use whatever you want really and get this kind of thing pattern to going on. Y'all drop those googly eye emojis in the chat. Uh, I'll kick <laughs> us off there. Googly eyes in the chat, please. Um, and yeah, so uh, let's see, and you've got uh other things let's see this is this says generative uh let's let's take a look yeah uh this is like um an example of it's probably not going to animate because i think you have to prefer this reduced motion mm. on, um, and it might act a little bit weird so it actually really accounts for that uh but this is kind of uh if it, it when it's working properly it's uh, an example of how you can add little touches of randomness to uh, an interface uh, and have like kind of random colors and elements usually those little orbs in the background kind of float around there in the chord so it's, it's an animation that's not based on fixed keyframes or like static values but they kind of move naturally with a little computer mind of their own <laughs> that's that's delightful um so you've you've done uh, ahead of time a, a, a I guess a, a preview of what we're making. This this is the a pen you've had out for a bit. Um, but this yeah. is what we're going to be making today. Can you walk us through this? Yeah. So what this is is um, it's a CSS paint API work clip, um, which allows you to create like a little avatar based on uh, a name. So given a name, say Bob Dylan or Jerry Garcia or whatever. Uh, you feed that in, and then it will always give you back the exact same pattern. And then with that pattern, you can sort of apply whichever colors you like and just, just take it around with you wherever you like. It's just kind of a bit of fun and a, and a cool way of showing what you can do with uh, CSS CD. Yeah, so if you change that sort of stuff onto your name there, um, you, should, should, you should hopefully see that it changes. Uh, I, I think that um, there's some CSS targeting data name. So I think it might act a little bit weird. If you oh, I see. Okay. So if you just, if you, yeah, if, if you go into the actual CSS, you can change it, but um, we can we can explore all of yeah. that as we re rebuild it ourselves. Okay. Yeah. So um, this is CSS logic. You're doing this with CSS, where it takes in the name uh, and it spits out one of these uh, unique avatar like things that that almost could stand in as like the auto generated like slack avatars or something for sure exactly it's just trying to show like a practical way that we can use generative techniques in in like a standard uh interface essentially that's awesome um yeah, hopefully <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm i know we've got a lot to get through there's there's gonna be so much to learn so i want to dive into it um, you Ooh. you sent me a repo that we're going to be using as a starter. So if you're interested yeah. in following along, here's here's the uh, the repo. Um, 
but I've gone ahead and uh, cloned it. I should probably go ahead and install some dependencies here. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, yeah. Sounds good. While that's working, um, how do you want to get started? What should we do? Cool. So with uh, Paint API Worklets, which is what we're making today, uh, you, you always start off with a, a JavaScript class. Um, so that's probably the best place for us to start. So okay. if, you, if you pop in and see um, that worklet.js file there, uh, I've already added the imports um, in the packages we need for this because you, know, you don't want to be writing them extremely boring. So <laughs> they're already there. Um, so we can start off just by finding a class. And we can call that class Romai Avatar. Lovely. All right. And then uh, just, uh, yeah. Give it some, uh, some braces, I think. It's been a while yeah, since I've done anything with classes. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. We, we got it. Um, so you find your class, and then every worklet, paint and code worklet class, has to have a special function called paint. And what this function does is it this defines what gets rendered to whatever element you apply this uh, this worklet to. We'll kind of see that connection. In okay. Um, so yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that in a second. So we've got uh, we've got an avatar class now, which is cool. And that avatar class has a paint function, which we're going to use to um, render stuff. Uh, but the next thing we need to do before we can use it or anything is register it. Uh, and to do that, we can just hop right down to the bottom of the file and say, uh, call a function called register paint. Register paint. And this is a global function? Yeah, because... Um, what happens with uh, worklets is they they all get spun up off of the main browser thread and they have like a special little scope and this exists in the scope where they kind of live outside of the main thread um, and it helps register it. If it. It's kind of a very chill way of explaining it, but um, I think that's kind of good enough for, okay. for today. Um, so if we call we call register paint and the first argument we pass is what we want to call this worklet when we reference it in our CSS. Um, so for us, we can just do a camel cased version of this class name. So uh, for all my avatar, I'm just in camel case is great. Lovely. Okay. Uh, and then the second argument we want to pass is the class itself. Okay. And so what we're doing here, I so full disclosure here, the stuff that we're doing with um, with Houdini a APIs like. I've only seen it on the peripheral. I haven't actually done it myself. So, oh. uh, yeah, maybe we could just start with, like, what even is this doing? What's going yeah. on? Yeah, sure. So, um, it's... What we're doing here is we're just... We're defining a something called a worklet, which is a way of adding an image to any CSS property that expects one. So, you could say, like, where you would usually pass perhaps, like, a URL to... Uh, the, like a background image property, you can instead pass uh, a call to paint and then pass in the worklet name. And that worklet can you then use its special paint function to render whatever you want to that element. So it's kind of a way of creating like, looks like a dynamic image uh, for any uh, CSS property that expects one. Is it, just, kind of... is it just images or can I have worklets that return non imagey things? Uh, well, paint API worklets, which is what we're working on today, uh, are just for rendering images. But I think there are other types of worklets defined as part of the spec. I've never worked with them, and I'm not sure what they are, but I okay. think that they do exist. So, uh, but I haven't seen them in a while very much. I think that's kind of like a uh, under the radar little thing at the moment or something like that. So we're defining a worklet called Voronoi Avatar that yep. could be used in our CSS in substitution, like uh, as an alternative to anything you would normally put in image. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It, so we can sort of, we can check this out and sort of uh, do this in a more practical way rather than just kind of talking about it. It's probably sure. a better way of, Let's do of that. doing it. So if we, um, you might want to start up uh, there's a little dev server in this repo that you might want to uh, yeah. kick off. Lovely. Hopefully that all works okay. And that's uh, port one, two, three, four? Yeah, it should be. I think so. <laughs> oh, look at that. Wow. Did you know apparently there's a one, two, three, four emoji that uh, Rocket <laughs> is like recommending? 
Um, okay, so I've got a little okay. circle here. This is great. Yeah, this is where we're going to put our art. So we can just pop up in okay. the circle here. Yeah. Um, so if we pop back into our code for a second, and then if you go to the index uh, HTML file. Yes. Ooh, lots of time. Yeah, and then right, right down the bottom, just after that, what the canvas did, just pop a little script in there. Okay. And then in that script, we need to call uh, CSS in all caps dot paint workflow, uh, uppercase. Yeah, uh, dot add module, uppercase again. Oop. Lovely. And then we're going to, that's a function. And to that function, we're going to pass a string. And that string is the path to, um, in our case, it's a bundled version of our workflow code. And because we're using various ES imports and stuff, we want to just pull all of that code together in a nice little package and then import it like that. Um, so we're going to reference that workflow.bundle.js file, and it needs to be like an absolute path. So you okay. need a little dot slash at the start. You got it. Lovely. And then what we can do now our main thread and our CSS knows that this workflow exists and that it's something it can it can work with. So with our workflow canvas uh, class up there. We can set background image. Uh, sorry, um, in the oh. CSS class. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Great. Um, we can set background image. And then rather than passing the URL or whatever, we can just say paint. Okay. And and then and that looks like a yeah, kind of like a little function. And then we we pass in the name of our of our workbook, which in our case is Coronoi Avatar in our case. Awesome. And that is all you need to do to add a, a workbook and then how to, to use the workbook to apply um, an image to something. Now, we haven't actually got anything defined yet, so we should probably uh, add something to our paint function because right now this isn't going to do anything. Okay. So um, this paint function, every time it gets called, uh, has a few uh, arguments already passed to it. Um, so the first one we want is, is like context. I usually write that as CTX. And that's what that is. If you've worked with Canvas before, it's a 2D rendering context that is very similar um, without some of the features as just like an HTML canvas, okay. uh, 2D canvas. Um, so you can use all the exact same methods that you usually use uh, on that. Wait, so it's a way to think about this, um, just a way to basically do canvasy things in CSS? Like that's what the paint yeah. API is? It's can canvas totally and just, CSS? You can totally think about it like that, yeah. Okay, rad. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's really, really rad. And then, yeah, and so the second function is uh, geometry, which is going to be the width and the height of the element that it's painting to. So it okay. knows how big it is. And the cool part about uh, Paint API workbooks is every time that element changes dimension or something changes on the page, the paint function will rerun. So it's kind oh. of like responsive. Okay, so is, yeah, because if you were cool. doing this with a, a canvas element, you'd have to put a resize listener on there, and then you'd have to like right. run some JavaScript, like anytime this resize and repaint everything. This just lets yeah, you yeah. tap into CSS. Re oh, okay. It's a much cleaner way of doing it. That's it incredible. Yeah, You've, already really cool. You've already sold me, George. You've already told me. Nice. Let's just end it there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks for coming, y'all. I'm sure I'm glad you learned something. Uh, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very cool. It's it's not in all browsers right now. Like Chrome, Chrome is good with it, and a few others are good with it. I can't remember what they are now, but there's a good polyfill and stuff that you can look at. Okay. Or you can um, do, you know, just fail gracefully. But we can talk about that at the end. Um, okay. But for now, we just need one more parameter from this function, and that's props. So the other really cool thing about workbooks is if you define some custom properties. Uh, on the class ID, whatever the element that's being applied to, it can actually access those custom properties and use them to oh. change how it renders, okay. um, which is great. And it, it'll also watch those custom properties in the same way it does dimensions. So okay. um, it will rerun when they change as well, which is very useful. Um, so Eka's asking, I guess, for a clarification. She's saying, uh, wait, so we don't need to add a listener because it's reactive? Or it, it sounds to me because it's like tapping into the like, the browser's like CSS repainting operations. Yeah, exactly. It's very low level and you don't need to add any kind of listeners or anything like that. It, that's just part of how these inherently work. You don't okay. need to, yeah, so you're absolutely right. You don't need to do any of that stuff. That's incredible. And and being able to respond to custom properties as well, 
Um, yeah. Wow, that's, that's yeah. awesome. So you can, you know, implementing design systems with workloads and stuff becomes very easy, which is very cool, I think. Um, but yeah, um, let's just check this function is actually doing something. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing we might want to do is we can define a constant uh, width, and that's going to be geometry.width. Okay. And then another constant of height, which is going to be geometry.height. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm. You can destructure it if you like. You you, know, you know me so well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I didn't want to go into. That's great. So yeah, that's how I probably would have done it. But um, so now that we've got that, we what we can do is we can um say context dot fill style. So you set a fill style. Okay. Of, of say uh pick a CSS color like tomato. I like tomato. Color. I'm a big fan of tomato. Yes, it's a, it's a classic. And then we can do context of fill rect, and then do zero zero, which is the x y position of the rectangle within the geometry of the object, just okay. like a two D space, and then uh, width and height. So it fills up the whole and height of the object. All right. So and this should just make a tomato rectangle. Rect it's just going to create a rectangle. Apple, there it is. Apple dimensions of our element. And the width here, so it, it the width is the full browser dimensions right now. It's the viewport, which it's is why the, it's that element. It's that circle. Oh, that's got a, that's got a border radius. Okay, it, but it's it's the size of that element. It's not the whole browser window. It's just got the it. It's applied to. Yeah, I'm just gonna comment out that uh browser uh, the border radius there just so we can confirm it really is a rectangle. It's a yeah, rectangle yeah, cool. just turned into a circle. <laughs> Yes, right. that's true. It is a rectangle. Cool. Um, so what we're going to do, how we're going to create our kind of like little avatars today, we're going to use something called a, a, a Voronoi tessellation or a Voronoi diagram. Um, okay. We, I won't go too much into it because we could be here literally for hours, but <laughs> I, do have a, um, I do have a link for you to share in the chat that folks can read about if they like. They want to get a little bit more information on it. Okay. I'm just going to um, scroll through that too. Yeah, so you put very simply, uh, a Bruno diagram is a way of like partitioning a 2D space into lots of polygons that don't overlap. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like, I see it as like a natural grid, almost. That's how I like to think of it. Okay. It's, but it's, it's a lot more than that. But for us today, I just think of it as like a nice way of creating like a natural grid to place elements on. Uh, with the added benefit of having some cool polygon shapes on it, sort of inherently. Nice. Yeah. So um, we're going to use a broader diagram to position some circles and some lines and some polygons and uh, to make our avatars. So, but before we do that, we need to sort of pass a few properties to our uh, workload so that it, we can control how it renders. Um, so to do that, if we pop back over to our class for a moment. Cool. And we, so to tell a workload what custom properties it should receive or can receive, if you add a static getter to the class, so it's like if you pop up above that pain function, you should be able to do it. Okay. Well, just, uh, it, yeah, it's just kind of a little, and then do like static get input properties. Uh, yeah. Like this? Is that what yeah, you're... Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's it. And that, that's a function that returns an array. Lovely. And the first uh, item in our array is it's going to be a custom property. So it's, it's just a string name of a custom property. Okay. Uh, and we're going to call that avatar seed. So um, like... two, little, two oh. little dashes first. It's just how you would define a custom property. And that's... That's how you do it, and that's great. So that's the first thing we need. And then the second thing we need is we want to pass like eight colors, a, a maximum amount of eight colors to our workload that we can use to apply to the uh, to the, the avatars when we create them. Okay. Um, so we could add those, I don't think that, maybe we don't need eight, maybe we could do, uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll do it the, the nice way. So if you just pop up right to the top of the file there, uh, just below the imports and define um, a constant uh, color props. Cool, and this is going to be um, 
and then you are me. So if you do the little square brackets and then uh, three ellipses uh, yeah, um, within the, within those brackets, like a a spread. Oh yes. Uh, and then do uh, array. Array like this. Yeah, that's it. And then okay. eight. Uh, and it, it, it's the values cool, so that will make it eight uh, null or undefined items, and then we can map over that. Cool, and then um, you might want to open up some parentheses in there, and then uh, I usually I, we're going to want the index. So within those parentheses, I I would pass just whatever really an underscore as the first yeah. value, and then like i is the second one, because then we don't really care about the element because it's just undefined anyway. Uh, we're just going to care about that index. It's just a style thing that I do, but okay. you definitely don't have to do it. So um, effectively what we've done here is we've created more or less an array that goes from 0 to 7, functionally, right? Like, that's, uh, that's what we're... We're iterating over 0 to 7. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have anything in it. But yeah. It's, yeah, 0, zero to 7 with an AI array. Uh, and then we're going to just return a template literal string. And, and that's going to be a custom property, and it's going to be called, like, avatar color, and then index... Uh, Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, okay. Got it. I, I see Perfect. what we're doing yeah. now. And it's just, it's better than just doing it all by hand. It's just a little bit like yeah. that you can control it however you want. And it's just a little, I, I, I like to do things that way sometimes. You don't have to, obviously. Um, um, but then you can just destructure that right there. Yeah. Um, and then and then you've got those properties that you can work with, which is great. So we've defined nine uh, input properties, nine custom properties that we would expect on our object, one of which is avatar seed, and then you've got avatar color zero, avatar color one, all the way up to avatar color seven. For sure, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Although, actually, I, you could do zero. I might add one to that. Yeah. Index, I, I, I sometimes like to do it like that if it's in CSS. Uh, so to me, it makes more sense, but it's completely up to you, really. Um, but that's great. So we've, we've told our worklet what input properties it can work with and what input properties it can expect. But we actually need a way of passing them um, within the paint function because when they get passed to the paint function, props is something called a style property map, which is kind of like a weird object with like a special getter and all of this, all of this stuff. And it's not exactly the easiest thing to work with. So okay. before we go any further, we need to just add a couple of like utility functions. Um, one is going to be prop to string which will just convert a prop property to, to a string. string. Yeah, and then we'll take a prop. Okay. And it will return that prop to a string. So prop dot to string. And then I'm going to trim that dot trim as well, because sometimes they have these funny little um, trailing space at the start. You don't really have to do this if you work with the properties and values API as well. It's a little bit cleaner, but that really doesn't have the best browser support right now. So we can okay. stick with this just to kind of make it work for everyone. Uh, and then the second utility function we need is a prop to number. And that's just getting um, return pass float and the prop. Okay. Lovely, and uh, we just need one more, and that's going to be get defined colors. So we're going to use this to just, it, someone might not define all eight, they might only define sort of three uh, colors to pass in, or two. Um, so we just want to grab the ones that actually exist. Uh, so we want to return the color props dot map. Yeah, and then I'm going to use key as my kind of identifier. Uh, what we'll call it is the value, and then from this in this map, we're going to return uh, props dot get. But do we need props as a parameter here? Is that what's? Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. that's sorry. Uh, and then you're going to return props dot get key uh, dot two string dot trim. I suppose you could use the prop to string function if you want to do it. To. Prop to string and key. There we go. Uh, uh, prop to string, props dot get key. It would be props. Oh, props dot get key. 
Yeah, because it's oh, this right. actual like style map object where you can't yeah. necessarily just reference it straight away. Uh, and then what we're going to do right at the end is so we're going to just filter out all the values that, that are defined. So just after that map, we can just do dot filter um, and just say like value, and then we can just return the value. Yeah, that's great. Okay, and anything that's true. Yeah, give, give us all of the values that are actually like you know we actually have, um, which is cool. So now we've got ways of accessing all the custom properties that we want to tell our workflow about and we want to pass to our workflow, which is super cool. So now we can actually kind of do something with them, which is great. So in our paint function now, we can say uh, font seed. OK, down here, font seed. Yeah, uh, equals uh, props, this dot props to string. And that's going to be props dot get. Avatar seed. Uh, and then I, what I might do um, is pass in like a default value as well. So within that props to string uh, call, do you like a to, um, you know, like an or operator? Uh, sorry, oh, yeah. Below, yeah. Where you're, where you're doing. Um, like that? Well, you could, do it, you could do it there, or you could do it where you're actually defining the seed itself. It's probably a bit better. Oh, so I think. Okay. Yeah, and then just do like or uh, it would be within that props to string function for the rather than the input. So you just like, yeah, that's it. Like, uh, oh, okay. or like a number. I'm going to say like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then like just so it's got something. That's great. Yeah, that's that's super cool. So but it's always going to be something there, which is nice. Okay. Uh, and then we can just do quotes colors is get defined colors props and then just pull all of, all of those colors out. Um, so we've got something to work with. Sorry, so what are. So I'm I'm doing get defined color. Am I assign what am I assigning this to? Uh colors equals colors equals get defined colors. Define oh, this should be colors. Lovely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and to that we'll just pass the box. Okay. Cool. So That's we... pretty good. Um so we've got everything going on there, which is pretty cool. We can um if we like, we can now console log these. So we can console the log seed and we can console the log colors. Console.log. I'll actually put these in braces and that'll yeah, give us the I, extra. I love that trick. And yeah. then if we pop back over to our element, um, we can define them. Okay, yeah. Um, but over. We can just make sure that they're coming through. Okay, and that'll be an index, yeah. Yep, and so, then how do you like to do this? Like, are you going to do it in, like, a style attribute, or are you doing it up here in the... Uh, don't, don't care, really. Okay. <laughs> I'd probably Let's... just put it up above the where it says paint thing to do that. That's, uh, yeah, we can just, um, to this, we can just pass, like, uh, your name or my name or a word or whatever. Let's do semantics. Let's Let's... Figure yeah. out what the official semantics avatar is. You know, it's time for a rebrand. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, and then what we can do is we can um, pass in some colors. So mm -hmm. avatar color one, we can say like, I think we should do like black and white and orange would be cool. Black, white, and orange. Okay. Oh, that needs to be dash. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> black. That's perfect. Yeah. That's, and then that's avatar color two. We're going to make white, and then Lovely. I'm just going to copy this onto its own line. And then orange. We're going very Halloween, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's that time of year, isn't it? It's autumnal, you know? Um, seems like that's kind of a good thing to do. Yeah. Uh, so if, you, if we pop back into the browser now, um, we should hopefully see some of those logged out. Fingers yes. crossed, anyway. Uh, ooh, something... Yeah, that's all right. Goodness. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, index not defined. Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's go have a look. Oh, I must have. Yeah, hang on. I might have called something. Ah, there yeah, it, it should be. Yeah. Hi. User yeah. error. Okay. Hey, look at that. So our seed is some antics. Uh, in in quotes, which uh, surprised me. I, I guess you don't actually need quotes in CSS, do you? Um, yeah, you, I suppose you don't really need those. I can't remember how I defined them in the code, but it's probably worth just referencing that. I can't really remember now. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to close out of... Oh, yeah, that all looks great. That's all super cool, which is um, nice. 
then your pen was here. I'm I'm very curious now how you did that. Yeah, let's have a little look. Uh, where? Yeah. Oh, go. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did it. Like I that. mean, I did, um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think the the quotes will really be a problem, right? Because it's like, it doesn't matter. as long as it's predictable. Yeah, it'll always be that, so that's cool. It's cool. So the the main thing we need to do now, the really important thing, is to seed our to get random numbers. So we're going to use a lot of random numbers in this work, but um, which is you know very similar to using math.random. But rather than using math.random, we're going to use like a pseudo random number generator. Okay. Which is how we. Uh, use you know a seed in our case semantics to make sure we always get the exact same pattern returned um, so we've already got this function called seed prg which we can um just pass our seed to and this is part of um it's like a little collection of generative utility functions that i've got put together that uh, just save a bit of time when you're doing this kind of work because to write this from scratch on stream and stuff would take yeah. quite a long time. So yeah. <laughs> um so we we can just add that in our paid function next, I think. Okay. So we can say C D P R and G C. And this actually has an added benefit because um the way that paint API worklets are Oh, you would just do, um, you just need to call um, CDPRNG. That's what you need to do, just the function. Oh, okay. Got and it. And then pass C to it, and it will automatically do some fancy magic behind C. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, and so, PRNG, this stands for pseudo random number generator? That's it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, and yeah, so with the added benefit, you should always use, even if you're not doing generative work like this, if you're doing any kind of randomness in a, in a workbook, you should always use a pseudo random number generator because if you have random numbers, every time truly random numbers and you don't reset the seed, oh. every time that this paint function runs and that element resizes, you're going to get stuff just jumping all over. The gotcha. Place. So if someone's like resizing their browser, you're going to get like strobe effect as like every frame of that looks uh, yeah. like completely and different. Obviously be really bad. Uh, I know you're into accessibility, so, but for folks with, you know, like a, uh, emotion sensitivity or something or, or sensitive to flashing imagery, that's obviously quite dangerous and don't really want to be running with that. So, yeah. Um, you, you should always just. Use a simple uh, pseudo random number generator when you're working with workers that are going to go into production or anything like that. Sounds good. Sure. Yeah. Um, so cool. So we've got, uh, we've got that all sorted. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're going to create something called a for loop diagram, um, which we looked at just now. Um, and that's just kind of like a natural grid which we can pop things on. Um, and the way that for loop diagrams are formed is you drop lots of points onto a canvas. And then you draw a polygon around each point that contains only that point and no other points. And we're not we're not going to do that, <laughs> but we are going to For sure. need to we're going to need to sort of create that and make that happen. So you can see this happening in this animation here. Yeah. So you drop lots of points, and then you, you make sure each point just lives in one little polygon. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of evening out the size of all of the polygons, and that the technical name for that uh, technical name for that is, is like a relaxation for a Lloyd. It's called a Lloyd's relaxation with Bruno diagrams, but that doesn't matter. It's <laughs> it's quite dry. We don't need to really. You, you will you much. will be tested on this at the end of the stream class. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, you won't. Um, they said that's me either because I can't remember quite how it works. <laughs> so if we anyway, if we know what it is, we can use it. Um, so if we pop back over to our avatar here, we can um, define some points because uh, that's the best thing we need. So what we can say is um, const points uh, equals, uh, we're going to do the same array trick as before. So uh, just the square brackets, the structure, array, and then uh, just array is fine. And then to that, we're not going to pass a fixed value. We're going to use a random function, which we've imported above, which is just the same as math.random, really, but it's been seeded. So it will always have okay. the values. And we can give it a minimum and a maximum value. So we want a minimum of four points and a maximum of, say, 24 points. 
And then there's one more flag we can pass to that, which is true, which will just make sure it always returns that a whole number so that we can iterate over it. Okay. Um, and then we can map over those points just in the same way as we did before. And then, awesome. All right. Uh, we don't. We don't really. Yeah, we don't need anything from that, and then we're just going to return an object uh, from that. Sounds good. So return an object. Lovely. Uh, and that's going to have an x value. It's just a point. It's just like a little point in like a uh, a two D space. And the x value is going to be a random number somewhere between zero and the width of our element. So we can say random zero width. Random, zero, and width, okay. Awesome. And then y is going to be a random number somewhere between zero and the height. All right. And that's, to be honest, that's all we need right now. And then we can move on a little bit and we can create our coronoid or our coronoid tessellation. So we can just pop down a little bit and we can say um, const, we can call it whatever we want. I mean, const diagram, we can say. Uh, equals create for my diagram. And this is again one of your helpers from your generative utils. That's what for we're sure. working with. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can there's that tutorial and we'll go into all the detail you need to like fully understand this and be able to use it going forward. But I don't want to go too deep into it right now. Uh because we'll just be here for too long. Uh, <laughs> so to see that we pass uh width. So it's a configuration object. Sorry, okay. that you just pass in a width there. Object and that can just have width, height, and points. I'm just going to one line it. What? Yeah, 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 point. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's great. So we've got that. Is it we've already got, painting our diagram? Uh, we won't be painting anything right now. Okay. We, we, we don't really have anything like going on. Uh, we just have some cells. We haven't put anything in them. Okay. We just have like a cool, like organic grid where we can like put some shapes uh, and do that. We can put any shape on the. You know, we'll, we'll probably look at circles first today and then do some other shapes if we have time. Or, All right. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a good thing to do. We'll start off putting a little circle in each of the cells, and then if we've got time, we can expand it. But then if not, we can always just link to the, the finish code, and folks can kind of see how that works. I think that's probably like yeah. a good thing to do. Um, so cool. So what we can do now is we can iterate through each little cell in our diagram with a circle in it. So to do that, we can do uh, a diagram that cells the for each. Cell that for each, okay. And then just say cell, pass that through. Lovely. And then what we can do is we can define uh, a random fill style and a random stroke style. And to do that, we can say context.fill style equals random. So we're using that random special random function again, and we, but we can just pass in our colors and it will just pick out a random color from that colors array that we have defined. So in our case, it will be red, white, or orange, I believe, or, or, or like black, black white, and orange. And orange. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and we can do the same thing with context and stroke style as well. Okay. Uh, context. Uh, what did you say it was called? Stroke. Oh, stroke style. Okay, so that's stroke the style. outline. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can do the same thing. We can just say random colors because we might need both of those uh, shortly. Um, cool. So to start, I'm just going to see how how we do. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna run with just circles for today because I think we yeah. might not have time to do all of these. Should I be should, um, I, should so I be we'll, using the cell argument um, for anything here? Uh, we're gonna use that in a moment. Oh, okay, um, got it. To do some cool stuff. So what we want to call now is context begin path to start drawing a new path. This is just the same as like HTML canvas. Um, so we, we'll begin a path and then we want to say context.art, which is zero. Oh, sorry, just after you call begin path. So that's a function in, in oh, I see. itself. Just lets the context know that it's going to start doing something. And then we can call art. And uh, so the first value is the X position. And for that, we're going to use cell.centroid.x, which Essentially, it's just the center of the cell. Okay. Um, and the y is going to be cell.centroid.y, which is just the point in the middle of the cell. Um, and then the next argument for arc is a radius. Uh, and the radius for this, we're going to do cell.inner circle radius divided by two. 
And NSF radius is something that I've added to each form of my cell. It's just, it's like a handy guide for like when you need to position something with a cell and not have it overlap. Um, it's just a nice little circle that sits in the middle and it makes sure you never go out of the edges or anything like that. Got it. Um, and then we just want to pass the zero as next argument. Uh, and that's the pi times two, which is just the start and end angle of the uh, arc. Okay, so this says, yeah, okay, this is going to create a full circle, okay. That's it, yeah, cool. Um, and then we can say concepts.fill after this, after that arc thing. Um, oh, okay, arc, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, no, you're good. Concepts.fill. Awesome. Cool. So fill, uh, and then we can probably just leave that and just see if it's done anything, I guess. Okay, let's give it a shot. Fingers crossed, anyway. Fingers crossed. Nothing like a live demo. Oh my goodness! Yo, hey. yo. Thanks. Okay, <laughs> and and so the placement of these circles, as well as their color, and I think to some degree their size as well. These have yeah. all been random, uh, pseudo randomly generated, right? Yeah. So um, if we change, if we refresh the page, for example, yeah, it's exactly the same. Yes. This is because this it's still like... using the seed semantics. So this is the official semantics uh, polka dot <laughs> pattern, I suppose. I'll yeah, start. Right. So and, and the really cool part is if, if you resize this now, you should see that it's yeah. not all just responsive. It just moves with the uh, with the element really nicely, which is really cool. Oh, man. Ah, so cool. Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? Um, and it just, you can, yeah, do whatever it is. And um, we could change the name now if we wanted to and see um, if it changes it, or we could have some different colors to pass through and you can start kind of customizing it a little bit. Yeah, let's um, let's uh, quickly change up the name. So I'm going to do George Francis. Um, cool. And okay, so this is the official George Francis <laughs> polka dot pattern. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Um, so that's that's like the first shape. Obviously, in the yeah. open example that we looked at earlier, I had. I also am um, drawing a polygon at each of the Voronoi cells. So I'm using the vertices of each cell to render a polygon, which is like, which is really nice. It definitely adds a lot. Uh, and I'm also drawing like lines within um, some of the uh, some of the cells and like rotating them around the map okay. as well. Uh, we can look at doing that. I'm not sure if we have time for it. We might have time. It's up to you. I'm not sure. I. Uh... Let's see what all okay, so we've we've got about fifteen minutes maybe before we need to start wrapping up. So um yeah. do you think we could get something done within the next ten minutes or so? Could. I think I think we could get some polygons going. Let's get some polygons yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we got it, we got it. Um so if we put back into our work that uh, at the moment. Okay. And then we're gonna define a new function just outside of that class scope that can just live right up into okay. the wherever you want to put it, right down the bottom. And it's gonna be function polygon. And to that, the first argument we're going to pass is a context. And the second is going to be points. And to, yeah, that's that's all we need. That's nice and simple. We're going to keep it simple. Cool. Um, and then the first thing we want to do is context.move to. Uh, and that's going to move to points. Uh, that's a function. Uh, and that's going to be points, zero, zero. So that's a two dimensional array of an XY point. Oh, that's the first XY point in points. So, yep. And then we're going to be point zero one. So you're moving to that first point. Uh, Wait, with a oh. as well. So I'm sorry. So do do what? Like change this to zero one? No, that's perfect how you have it. So you, you want to move to point zero zero, which is the first X value. Okay. Uh, the first point's x value, and then you want to have a little comma, and then as the second argument, oh, okay. you want to you want to pass point zero one, and that's the y value of Got that it. first point. Okay. Um, which is awesome, and then we're gonna have a little for loop. We're gonna keep it old school, the, the the for loop. I don't do this very much unless I'm doing generative stuff. Uh, uh, I is in points at like minus one uh, hypothesis, but we want to start on one because we've already moved to the first point. So we okay. And I. Wait, so less than length or less than length minus one? Uh, minus one. I guess, yeah, because it's always tricky with like the less than or less than or equal. Yeah, so, that's confusing, okay. yeah. Uh, but that's how we'll probably do it. And then we're just going to call uh, context.line2. Context.line2, okay. 
and then that will just be the upwards that will be very similar to the move to. It'll be points I zero and points I one. You got it. Of that. And that's it, really. Um, and so that's all we need for that function. And then what we can do is we can move back up into our paint function if we'd like. And where we uh, where we draw where we call begin path and we draw our up, we can say if random zero one is greater than, uh, sorry, just before where we say begin path. So we're going to wrap okay. that path call in an if statement. So Got we can it. say if random zero one is greater than 0 0.5, draw a path. But otherwise, draw a set. So it's got like it's like flipping a coin and saying, oh, hey, I just flipped a coin and I got heads, so I'm going to pop a circle in. Or, oh, I just flipped a coin and I got tears, so I'm going to render the cell. That's okay. kind of like what we're saying here. Uh, and then we're going to say context dot begin path. And then we're going to say uh, polygon. And we're going to pass in context. And then we're going to say polygon scale, which is a function uh, that I've imported above, which can just take a polygon or a set of points and scale it down or up, which is very handy when you're working with like handle stuff. Okay. Uh, and see that we're just going to pass cell the points. So that's the vertices of this little cell. And we're going to scale it down by like 0 0.15. So we're going to uh, pass in 0 0.0, 0 0.85. So it's like 80 oh, okay. of its. So that it way, is, like the, the the stroke is actually inset a bit from the actual edges of the cell. Exactly, it just gives everything a little bit more room to breathe, so things aren't like touching each other and like butting up against each other and things like that. I like it. Um, and then we can just say context dot fill. Context dot fill. Okay. And then again, fingers crossed, we should see some shapes. All right, here's here's open. Here's uh, open. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so good. So good. Oh, yeah. that's excellent. Okay, so it's randomly deciding whether you use the circle or the polygon. And yeah. all right. Uh, and I'm guessing this is also predictably responsive. So, this will be. Yeah. Oh, that's that's incredibly cool, George. Thank you. Yeah, and so this is great. Like if you were like a startup and you wanted to add some avatars to your app and you didn't want to like post them on mm -hmm. a server and pay this money for it and be stressed about back end stuff or whatever, you can just like make a little work bit and it can do all of that for you, which is I think is a is a nice example of bringing randomness into UI design uh in, in just a way that's a, a little bit fun and hopefully a bit useful as well. All right. Yeah. Anything you can else? Add more to this if you want. Yeah, let's let's uh is there like one small thing that we might be able to add in the next few minutes? Well, actually we need them to easier bits and the lines are the hardest bits. So okay. we might want to leave them. <laughs> Exercise <laughs> best left to the reader of the, the, the code pen. Okay. Yeah, there's a, there's um actually this code pen isn't a good place to look if you want to see the source code for that work but because it, it's being loaded from unpackaged the best uh, place to go is to head over to, to the repo that i've linked to you and there's a work that a complete file that you can look at in there which has all of the complete code in it yes okay so we can probably i think show the the worklet complete uh yeah well, as you yeah. can see there's there's a whole lot here that's uh, very familiar. It's it's the same stuff that we were just doing. Um, I yeah. see you've got some stuff for lines. I think we is there any way we could get it to where it shows like in our browser it shows the product of the worklet complete. We can just copy paste this whole file into the, <laughs> the file that we just made. I guess. All right. Yeah, I I, I do want to save the the worklet that we've got here. So I'm just gonna instead uh, rename this underscore worklet. And rename this. That'll do it. Probably need to like, if I had to guess, uh, restart the. It might be alright. Ah. I might have. I might have done it well enough. That no, it's looks okay like you did. Much. All right. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, and then so with your finished code, I see that yeah, you've got so yeah. It's cool. a little bit different this one. I made some adjustments to uh, to the one that we wrote on the fly together so that it'll be a bit like uh, different sizes. Uh, the size that we're kind of working at a little bit more blown up. But you can see here you've also got some lines going on and things as well. But it's a little bit zoomed out and it's a little bit like it's not quite as nice as the one that we were just working on. I don't think. All right. 
Well, yeah. this is very, very cool. Uh, I, I super, super want to thank you for, for showing this off. Um, okay. So, okay, let's, you know, folks are, are jazzed about uh, generative art. We've got some excitement in the, the chat about this, too. Like, every step of the way, folks have been celebrating this. Um, if folks wanted to continue working with generative art, and specifically with uh, some of these techniques that we've seen today, um, yeah. where are some resources that we might send people to learn more about these techniques and tools? Cool, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to shamelessly plug my own bit of writing because I, 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 really, I wrote an article for the CSS Tricks a little while ago, um, which is very much aimed at anyone who's completely new to generative art and is completely new to uh, CSS Paint API. And it's a really in depth guide to see how to get started. Um, and and like, it goes into a lot more detail of the things that we worked on today. So I think this is quite a good place to get started if you're if you're new to CSS CDD and generative art and design uh, or the CSS Paint API. Um, and also you can go and check out Houdini.how, which is a really cool resource of lots of different uh, work clips that people have made. Um, that's super cool. Yeah, you should see lots of different ones on here. So this is different uh, work clips and things. That Cool uh, which is nice. Uh, and uh, Una Kratz does lots of really cool talks on Houdini um, that we might have to do, um, but I'm not sure on any exact links right now. That's fair. Uh, Una Kravitz, I can spell, I promise. Uh, it's e ETS, I think. Or, ETS? Or, I don't know. I can't remember. Well, uh, let's. That seems to have pulled up some good uh, recommended searches there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it, it does some really good uh, talks on Houdini that I really like watching. Yeah, that's a great starting point. This this talk here is it's really cool. Okay, um, so that's our uh, CSS Houdini and the future of styling. All right, yeah. what are some? Uh, so I guess today we explored the the Paint API, which. Um, I learned a lot about now, um, like using it in like to basically do canvas operations in place of uh, any CSS uh, attribute that would typically expect an image. So doing canvasy yeah. logic inside your CSS. Um, but Houdini is several APIs, right? Um, what are some like other APIs that that uh, folks might be able to use that aren't just Paint? Ooh, uh, oh, no, oh, no. oh no, oh no, I put you on the spot. Oh no, no worries. Uh, there's, there's the properties and values API, which is kind of like a typed object model for custom properties. So it allows you to define like uh, this custom property should be a bit like this type um, and it has the default value of whatever and all of this cool stuff, which is awesome. Um, so that's like a big one. Uh, and there's like there's a layout one as well, which allows you to define like custom actual ways of laying out things, which is gonna blow my mind when I eventually look at it. But I haven't looked at it too much yet. And there's there's even like there's a font metrics API, I believe, that lives within there, which is uh, very early days. I think that sounds really cool. I think it should just allow us to get more info about different fonts and stuff like that. It's going to be cool. There's lots of different things. Um, if you go to Is Houdini Ready Yet, there's a there's a table with a really complete list of all of the different things and where you can use it as well, which is cool. Is Houdini Ready Yet? Here we go. Yeah, so there's an animation workload, there's the typed object model that we uh, typed earlier that we spoke about just now, there's the layout API, yeah, um, and there's the font metrics one, which sounds cool. I don't know what the parser API is, but um, yeah. I don't know. Let's let's find out. Ooh, anytime you see Tab Atkins on something, you know it's good. <laughs> uh, interesting. Might have to dive into this. I have no idea what this is as well, but I'm there's lots of really cool stuff coming with uh Houdini. It seems that the takeaway here uh, for for folks who are interested in Houdini is uh. It sounds like there's going to be more and more ways to effectively extend your CSS using JavaScript, um, yeah. but not in the typical like uh, main thread blocking way that you might have to with like adding a whole bunch of resized listeners, but rather exactly. letting it be done as part of like the CSS rendering process. Exactly, it's just like a really kind of fast performance way of doing this stuff, which is great. 
Uh, you can tell when skills are about doing things like uh, maybe polyfilling a uh, property or, or something like that. Absolutely. Or, or take it in a creative direction, which is what I tend to do. Okay. Well, uh, George, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to shout out your uh, Twitter again. Uh, because that is a fantastic place to see whatever you're working on. Um, yeah. Are there things you want to promote? Uh, uh, anything um, you're you're uh, selling, perchance? Uh, yeah. uh, well, yeah. Um, I what I'm not doing is pay stuff. Although I buy a lot of what I do is just kind of print artwork, um, physical artwork, and I've been working on a series of prints which are inspired by Turing patterns and reaction diffusion, um, which they will be going. Share this quote alert uh, on sale on a brand new generative shop on my site next week, I'm hoping. Um, and you can sort of find some renders uh, on my Twitter. And these are all generative again. So this is kind of like what we did today, but on a quite a big scale um, with like random color palettes and uh, random layouts and, and random like growth simulations, what it does. Um, and, and that's sort of what I've been most excited about recently. All right. Um, super, super excited for that. I'm gonna. I missed out your your previous uh sell of of work, and so I'm gonna have to get me something as well. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, you know, while you're following folks on Twitter, go ahead and follow Semantics on Twitter. That's where you'll keep up to date with all the like upcoming streams. I want to say next week we're doing some stuff with uh Carrie Fisher. Um, that's Carrie with one R and not two R's, so not Princess Leia. But uh, we'll be doing uh, SVG accessibility, I believe. I still need to follow up on that. But um, y'all, it's been good. Um, join us same time, same place next week, 12 p.m. Central, right here, twitch.tv slash semantics devs. Uh, thank you again, George, for uh, being here. Chat, thank, thank you, you for being here. Uh, stick around. We're going to go raid someone. Bye, y'all. Bye.